start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gary. Keep me on my toes. Okay, has everyone had a chance to read through the minutes from April 17th? Yes. Okay, Did I'm looking for a motion. So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Did you get the dates, times, whatever you were missing that you needed to make the minutes complete? I did not. I need a date and time from Randy when he gets a minute. I'll make a note. Where? Where? So what, can, what? can we approve without whatever this uh, is? What do we need? Minutes. Clerk. It has to do with the resolution having to do with the contract with Arietta. Okay. There was um, something that wasn't complete and the one that I had. Are you going to pull the do minutes Do you have up? a final? Mm, not with me. Hold on. I have one in my file at work, um, but we're basically waiting for Arietta to sign it and get it back to us, correct, Randy? Right. So it was completed. Yeah. It was complete at the last meeting, unless you didn't have it. The only thing we were looking for or waiting on was a date. That, that would be the She wrote it in the introduction that she could read it. Okay. You know. In the email? Like her, in, the yeah, the intro to her email. Draft of minutes. These are not complete due to some missing information. Randy and I, Randy, I will need the agreement effective date for resolution number 59. Yeah, it's this one here. Uh, yeah, effective starting, so it's in the beginning. Yeah, the effective date. So we just need that date and then. Well, the effective well, date. The effective date would be the, Yeah, and then gets it back to us. So we don't know yet. We haven't gotten it back. Right, right. Okay. So we're good then. Here, we don't have a. There's not an actual date for both parties are signed, and, and we get that agreement from them that we can drop stuff off to the bill. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, any other further discussion on the minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I will abstain because I wasn't here. Okay. Okay, Randy, hi, we? Okay, so we have, we're just finishing up with the groomers right probably tomorrow in the next day. Um, we swept the roads, anybody's noticed. <laughs> the few, repaired a few potholes um, down on Gilman Town, where there's a couple, and then a few other ones on the, the ro local roads up here. Um, it's a new pavement pothole in Gilman? Yes, we um, owned four spots that were either the blacktop, whatever it is. Winter kill. Top, the plow pulled out chunks. So when we swept it, either the broom did it or the plows did it or something that we noticed there was. Um, and then the also in the sweeping the village swept their third end of Gilman Town and ended up turning around on the edge of our road and messed up what we did two years ago, but they went back and fixed it and then I talked to Roger today and they said when they're doing their patchwork for their roads, they're going to do that also. So, and this corner of the parking lot. And made him aware of that again, where they dug it out for Christmas night. 
Okay. Um, we cleaned up the front lawn and the side lawns at the town where I was gone. Uh, painted lines and installed the bumpers. And we are started today on clearing debris and raking Perkins Clearing Road, which ended up uh, I went up to there this morning. There's still snow on the side of the road, but um, it's doing very well. We had no no washouts. We had two plug culverts that mm. just opened them up, leaves and stuff like that. So that was good, very good actually for the year of frost and rain, and frost and all that. Any estimate when it will open? What's that? Any estimate how soon? I'm hoping Monday after Mother's Day, which is two weeks. So I'm hoping it dries out enough. Right now, I wouldn't open it up for cars. Not if they stay, it, even remotely think about getting towards the edge, they're going to be stuck. So we know somebody will do that. Yeah. Um, and the good news is we have received our insurance premium for the adjustment for this parking lot. So as as they said, we just had to wait, and they finally got around to sending us a check for the amount that we requested the adjusting amount. So that's good, that is good news. And then of course uh, every time I mention good news I gotta throw in some bad news. You don't have to, that's not a rule. Oh, nobody told me about that. I went out and really searched and looked for <laughs> um, Route 8 and 30 has been delayed. What? Ugh. Boy, that really shocks me. Shocks you, huh? They are, imagine this, behind schedule on their other job. And now the expected start date is the third week of June. There we go. Like last year. Yeah, that's exactly like last year. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like last year. And they'll be closing the road just in time for all the Fourth, Fourth of July, July traffic. Of course, yeah. 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 So then they'll if say, they get to and then right. they'll say, well, you know, we won't want to mess up your Fourth of July and they'll go somewhere else. So you know what we really, really needed way before paving that? Was new guardrails at the, uh, oh, the at bridge? The bridge. Yes. Because the they had lost their shine. They, they, so, they, you know, I right. couldn't drive through that with my jeep. And, and you I could don't see, understand. you could see easier through them yeah. at the vista. Now, <laughs> now it's all solid steel just about. So, uh, <laughs> Lord, I, I so, gotta shut up because I can't make enemies that. with these people. Okay. And I inquired about what the world are they doing down there, and from what I understand, the new guy that's running the Wells DOT was came got moved up here this winter whether he wanted it or not lives in Poland and I don't know if he's thinking about taking it on full time or not but that gentleman came off of the bridge crew from wherever he was working downstate and their plows like ours did two years ago, caught the bridge oh, ouch. this winter. Yeah. Not once, but a couple mm -hmm. times also. And he miraculously even said, we put up signs and they still didn't. I said, oh, I know all about this. <laughs> and I asked you guys to repair that two years ago and nobody, it fell on deaf ears. Now all of a sudden when it happens with this guy that happens to be on a bridge crew and he said that bridge is not up to date with any of the joints and this and that and it's going to be on my first priority so i think there's more to come than just railings is what i'm trying to get across to that i have a very sneaky feeling that those abutment joints that we are having problems with are going to get changed up also good so, mm -hmm. but i could not get any word out of dot for that we'll play because that was already pretty <laughs> right distraught about his answer to me about today about the, uh, he called me last week and I asked him and then, he got, and then I called him today about some other situations and I said, you haven't changed your mind on this whole June thing, have you? And he said, no, it's going to get done. Okay. Sometime this decade? Yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be done. Will we still be alive? Two years, two years ago. Two years. No, no, but that's been shelved for a little bit longer. Okay. Well, the good news on that is UFPO has their markings out. Mm -hmm. They have flags out alongside the road to mark the electric light. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. But is that for all the way down? Or is it just for this bridge shop? No, it was all the way down. Oh, okay. They have a white line, and I only know this because I travel that a lot. Mm -hmm. 
They have a white line down by the Three Mile Bridge mm -hmm. that has UFPO with arrows pointing up the road. Okay. And then they have flags from uh, the power station on up. That's a good sign, right? Sorry, yeah. get some I thought it was too. Even though they're not going to dig. And National Grid has installed and moved the lines on the Fish Mountain Culvert Bridge project. Oh, so good. That's good. I am supposed to be in contact with the engineer tomorrow. He's supposed to set up a Zoom meeting with the co contractors, myself and the engineer, to set up a timeline when they're going to start this. Super. That's all I have. Wow. Okay. Okay, so next we'll go to Old Business, the Short-Term Rental Committee. Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know we have a lot of work to do and we want to try to get this completed tonight. Um, it shouldn't be horrible. Um, I provided everyone a <clears throat> copy of the... Okay, first of all, we... we the shift change it changed from a whereas kind of resolution, the lawyer recommended that a local law be put in place instead simply because um, it applies just to the local jurisdiction um, and we're calling it a law because ordinances tend to relate to forbidding or restricting and we are not intending that at all. So this would be local law. Um, I followed a guide that she gave. Section one talks about the purpose. Shall I read these or, or? Yeah, I think just read one and. Okay, so the purpose is uh, short term rentals have become commonplace in the town of Lake Pleasant and regulations to protect the safety of guests and communities does not currently exist. The following local law imposes mandatory regulations on all town of Lake Pleasant property owners that desire to rent their property on a short term basis. Discussion? It is what it is. Section two is uh, the authority. This local law is enacted pursuant to the provisions of municipal home rule law and the town law of the state of New York. Section three, definition. A short-term rental is a dwelling unit which is rented or leased for a period of less than 30 days. Hotels, motels, and other dwellings already regulated by the New York State Department of Health are not included in this group. The attorney asked if maybe we wanted to add campsites. To me, that's a different jurisdiction altogether. Yeah. Any discussion on section three? With you. Section four, definitions and applications. Instead of listing all the definitions, um, I said that as used in this local law, they're all analogous to and the same as it appears in the property maintenance code of the state of New York. You want to reference it? Look it up. Mm -hmm. Section five, authorization. The town board of the town of Lake Pleasant authorizes the code enforcement officer to issue permits to property owners to operate short-term rental units according to the provisions of this local law. Applications for a permit shall be processed under the procedures set forth. The attorney, in her response to me today, suggests that we change uh, the word permit and rephrase as registration throughout. We are not permitting anyone, we're simply registering them. Like that. Mm -hmm. So um, section five would then become um, to register. Uh, the town of Lake Pleasant authorizes the code and office enforcement officer to register short-term rental units according to the provisions of this local law. Applications to register shall be processed under the procedures set forth. Mm -hmm. That's good. good work there. Yep. She asked if there should be a process by which someone notifies the code enforcement officer that they do not intend to re-register. Um, so, um, so that they don't get charged late fees. Um, so we may want to put 
when we get to that point, but it's all within her same section there, so I'm jumping the gun. Never mind. Any other discussion on section five? No. Okay, section six, application. <coughs> all property owners desiring to rent on a short-term basis must comply with the regulations of this local law. However, nothing in this law shall alter or supersede any regulations or requirements of the Town of Lake Pleasant Zoning Ordinance, County of Hamilton, or state or federal regulations or requirements. Section seven, fee, a non-refundable fee set forth by the town board on an annual basis shall be submitted with each new application or annual renewal. Um, that gives us the leeway of changing the fee if necessary mm -hmm. without rewriting the law or readopting the mm -hmm. law. That's really good. So, Kathy, excuse me, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll strike anywhere going forward in Section 7 or 6 beyond the, the word fee, right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess I don't follow your thought process. Okay, so still a fee, but not a permit. Gotcha. Yeah, we're, we're registering, Registrate. and the fee is covering the cost of the time that might be necessary for the code enforcement of officer and the cost of the posters, which we are including as part of the, the, the process. Mm -hmm. So if anyone asks about why is there a fee, I got checking out Town of Web charges eight hundred dollars. Oh, it's all over the map. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. fifty dollars is. No, I think minuscule. I think what you find when those places that that have exorbitant ones is this is this is really the the tenor of their whole thing is to not have these things is to not have short term rentals. They're they're chasing them. That's yeah, really they don't want short term rentals in their residential neighborhoods. Right, so they're they want chasing them them commercial. Okay. Uh, Section 8, registration shall be completed between July 1 and July 31 each year. That gives someone the chance to register for the, do the course of a month. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, people come and go. If someone turns their residence into a short-term rental outside of that period, like later in the year, are you prorating uh, the fee? Are you... Non-refundable. I, I, well, that's a good question. I think it should be one flat rate with the same date. If they don't register till August, it's, it should still apply to the same fee as July. But I think Rochelle's saying if somebody decides be after, during the course of that year, or are they going to wait until the next July? Right, so if somebody decides in September, are they going to pay that $50 for September to June and then have to pay it again? Are you prorating that amount? Or should they even or have to register until the next registration fee and the next registration? I, I, I think we're getting too deep in the weeds there. It's, it's the lowest fee I've seen. Yeah. I wouldn't change it. It's yeah. non-refundable. You can have all 12 months or any part up. Okay. And, and Steve and I did discuss yeah, that today as well, and we yeah. thought that's what we thought. Okay. Okay. Section 9, failure to register, okay. failure to register or re-register by July 31st each year will result in an additional $25 fee per month. We're going to add a dollar sign in front of the 25. Mm -hmm. Drop that on the mm -hmm. proofreading. Um, maybe this is where we should, um, unless... Um, if a, if a property owner chooses not to, let's see, should there be a process by which someone notifies the CEO they do not intend to re-register so they don't get charged late fees? I think it, it, I don't think it should be required. I think it would be a nice thing for those folks to do <clears throat> to keep uh, uh, Steve Page's you know, uh, work to a minimum, but... There's, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting in the weeds again. Well, if we start yeah. chasing it down, if you didn't tell us, you know, just... Okay. We just assume if you didn't re-register, you're not registered. Agreed. And therefore, it's no longer a short-term rental. Again, this, I mean, if we're looking at this, if, if this was a business in New York State, I assure you, health department doesn't come calling me and wet nursing me and this and that. You either have your paperwork in or you don't. Got it. Right. And, and again, it's like we said, we're starting soft. Right. Yes. After the first summer season, we'll see. 
the committee will meet again, and if we need to tweak and adjust, we don't have to change the law again. We can just make changes as we go along. Sounds good. Okay, so Section 10, application forms. Um, I gave everyone a copy of the application. Mm -hmm. Applications for, this is for registering. That will have to change. Applications for registering. A short-term rental shall be available at the Town of Lake Pleasant Municipal Building during office hours or on the Town of Lake Pleasant website. Applicants shall file a separate permit for each dwelling they own. The application will request information concerning contact information, fire and safety, compliance, parking, occupancy, and water and septic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to go over the application. When, yeah, can, let's get through the law first, and then I'm... That, that's next, along with the poster. Okay. Cool. All right. Any other comments on Section 10? Okay. 11. Upon receipt of the application and fee, the Town of Lake Pleasant Zoning Officer shall issue the property owner or permit value, 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 blah, blah, valid for one year. The Zoning Officer has 30 days to determine if additional information is required or if the building needs to be inspected. Failure to act within 30 days shall constitute an approval. So we need to change the wording on that, right, for a permit? Boom, ba -doom, boom, boom, boom. Upon receipt of the application, a, oh, good. A one-year certificate? A one-year registration. No, registration. A registration. Valid for one year. Got it. Okay, section 12, renewal permits, and this is where that could come into. The applicant will provide the Town of Lake Pleasant with any changes prior to a New Year's permit being issued. The applicant will be notified within 30 days if additional information is required. Registration. Mm -hmm. so change That's the word, yep, yeah, again. Um, Permitted time, permits will be yearly and in effect for one year. That's a little redundant, but that's the way the law was written, so that's what I typed. So, so, so it would be registrations, right, will be yearly and will be in effect for one year. Is that year going to be July 1st to June 30th the following year? Yes. Okay. And that is addressed somewhere. Okay. For one year, July... 1 through June 30. I think I had that in there of following year. Okay. Okay. So it's now uh, registration will be yearly and in effect for one year, July 1 through June 30 of the following year. Yep. Section 14 has to do with inspections. Each unit may be inspected by the town code enforcement officer if a concern is noted in the application or a written complaint is received the complaint must have an identifiable complainant and be specific in violation concerns mm -hmm. notification all applicants must notify in writing all property owners within a 200 foot radius of the rental unit such notification must include the name and phone number of the property owner and or property manager should problems arise and there's some question about whether we should have this last line. Any communication in this format will not serve as an official complaint. It really isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Because we've already said what an official complaint is mm -hmm. in the previous section. Okay, good neighbor rules. And um, I have provided everyone a copy of the poster. There are no changes. This is the last one that... You all see, saw, all applicants will be required to post in a conspicuous location the Good Neighbor poster, which will be provided by the Town of Lake Pleasant to provide guests information on noise, pets, parking, occupancy, trash, emergency contacts, and address of property in case of emergency. Looks good to me. Me too. Okay. Any problems with the poster? Was everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. So a local host is going to be mandatory, correct? A local, if a local host will contact. be mandatory. A, a local host contact number. Well, that's let we'll do with that when we get to this. Okay. Okay. Section seventeen, the last one. The registration of a short-term rental property is for the purpose of information gathering 
or the town's code enforcement office to address nuisance conditions and ensure adherence to local buildings codes. It is not an endorsement or approval of the residence's safety or suitability as a uh, rental property. Um, Good legal ease. Uh, the attorney assures me that, um, well, she, she was very confused as to why the village was getting the advice that they were getting Indeed. about um, would be a concern for litigation. Um, she advised that we include the disclaimer on the form that indicates just what I read you in number 17. An attorney seems to think that'll be enough. Plenty. Yeah. She, she does not, you know, so anybody we, can sue anybody for any oh, reason. Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't mean However, you're win. yeah. It just so where would we put this more. disclaimer, Kathy? Hold on, that that's I. It's I printed a new one. Did I forget to grab it? I did. Okay. So, um, does anybody have anything else left on the law, or any of the attorney's responses? Okay, the last one I got from her is the one I handed out this that, that I got from her this afternoon. We addressed uh, the Section 5 changes of changing permit to registration. We um, addressed the not re-registering. Um, in Section 10, she did have a question about um, if someone owns one building with four units, are they registering all four or just the building? Again, I thought that was getting too weedy. Well, I kind of think that should be determined in registration. If you've got one building and you look at our fire extinguishers available, you've got one fire extinguisher that building. Then we can add that to the form. registration form. It's a simple add-on. I, I would say you register each unit. Okay, well then we don't need to add it to the law. No. Um, the Town of Lake Pleasant Zoning Office shall add the property owner to the list of Section 11. She wanted us to keep a list, but Steve will be doing that automatically. Of course. Yeah. Um, section 14, um, the inspection does not constitute a warranty by the town that the premises are suitable for commercial purposes and property owners are responsible for adhering to the requirements of any third party short term rental provider in ensuring the units are appropriately maintained in the conditions said, required for said purpose. Um, That's a good one to add. That could also be our disclaimer mm -hmm. or number 17 on the registration form, either one. And that's why I was waiting on that, Betsy. 17 makes it clear that any inspection isn't a blessing that the property is suitable for commercial rentals, but I like the way she phrased it in 14. Me too. Mm -hmm. Can I just go back for a second to uh, the uh, section 10 uh, reference from the attorney? Um, Don, I, I agree with you. They, they should all be listed if they're going to be, if I have a four cabin colony. Um, the question then arises, is it one fee? You know, I'm fine with one fee as long as the all... Places. I'd like to see a fee for each one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a big difference if you've got a four-room unit for... Like a four-bedroom home or something. Four separate units in one building, or you've got four different buildings Cabins. in mm -hmm. one spot. Do we even have that? We do. Well, yeah. we have cabin colonies that could go this route. Uh, the ones across from the inn, uh, there's four of them. If they were to decide instead of renting a week to you, a week to me, and so on, and, and go into this realm, it's four separate two-bedroom. But that's not one building with four units. That's separate buildings. No. Yes, but right. there are places about. that we can have one building with four units going up. But we don't have them yet. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't put it under our law, but I think. It, okay, so in my understanding, if it's one building and there's four separate units in it, that would be one permit. But if there's four separate buildings, 
that would be four different permits. Excuse me, registrations. 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 Is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what no, you're, you're saying? saying? But yeah. we're covered. We're covered under that by the section that says, do, 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 do. applicants shall file a separate permit for each dwelling they own, which is in section ten. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that covers it. Yep. So we're good with that. Okay. But I do agree with you on the section, section 14. I really like that as the disclaimer for the short-term rental registration form. I do too. I think um, that that would be a good way. And just above the, where they would sign. Exactly. That would be right in there. So, okay, so could we start with the front of the short-term rental registration? Um, owner of property, their permanent address, their phone number, local contact with any local contact phone number, the physical address of the property, and the occupancy of the building. Um, most of the time that's already found on your, your tax bill, uh, like under number of bedrooms. But that is also, different places diff deal with it differently. Um, at this point, I'm ready to put the onus on the owner. Um, and Can you add a word to that? Just put max, uh, maximum occupancy of building. I don't mind adding that. It's good. Okay. See, I have problems. Mac well, maximum well, sleeping well, occupancy no. of building. Maximum, Just maximum occupancy. occupancy. Well, I mean, I can cram people in like cordwood, but. Well, if you go on, on these are overnight guests. Yeah, if yeah. you go I on uh, any short-term rental, there's always occupancy. 10 people, you know, sleeps 10 people or whatever. Okay, so why are we adding maximum? Because I just feel should we put better. advertised occupancy? Yeah, they advertise their occupancy. But should we put advertised occupancy of building rather than maximum? Because then they would be confirming what they've already advertised. I think uh, if maximum. you go to a site and you say occupancy, and they say sleeps eight. Yeah. Then the question is, what I'm, I'm. The word maximum to me means how many people can you fit in sleeping bags laying in the living room if necessary, which is going to seriously affect right. septic. Right. And you don't want a one bedroom with a occupancy, with an occupancy of. I can't say that. No. Yeah, that's why I'm <laughs> wondering if we should to. put sleeping occupancy of building or bedroom, number of bedrooms or... No, because they'll put, if you look at them, they they have two bedrooms with with 15 people, mac maximum occupancy. Murphy beds. Yeah, yeah all right. Pull out multiple bunk beds. So like at the motel, how we did it is maximum occupancy was four because it was two double beds. Yes. So then they would pay for four people, whereas if they only had two people, then they'd pay for two. But the maximum we allowed was four. Okay. So everybody else is comfortable with max. I just, I don't understand the, the difference. Okay. Well, I'm, I, I'm happy, I am, but I don't, I'm not saying I'm happy to go with the flow. Hey, I, I would like to see a max. Okay, so the next question. Um, these are yes or no. Is the short-term rental hosted? Um, that, I, you know, that was an automatic word for me because of reading all of this stuff all over the place. A hosted short-term rental means that the owner is on site. Thank you. Like, okay. I, I didn't know what that meant. Or? Yes. So do we want to so, clarify this in there? Um, most people recognize the term, but, you know, just like Don wrote, you know, I'm happy to add that. When I, when I think hosted, you think of Airbnb, you are renting it from a host. So yes. they are all hosted. So why don't we just omit this whole number one and just not make number one our fire extinguishers available? We've got the owner's property and contact, their address, their phone number, their contact. We don't need to know if it's hosted or not. We've got a way we to contact to a anybody in confusing. case of a problem. So, so number one is gone. So, Kath, um, above that local contact, if any, um, are we to assume from the reading of the law that either the owner will be on site or there will be a local contact? Right. 
Okay, let's check this out. And I think that's critical. Yeah, uh, Section 10. Mm -hmm. Applicant shall file a separate permit for each dwelling they own. The application will request information concerning contact information, fire safety, parking, occupancy, water, and septic. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anything else. There is nothing else that says that somebody has to be on site or... Um, we could add a section saying, you know, if, if, if there's a problem with a place, and I think this is one of the things we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. If somebody has a problem with a short-term rental that is next door to them, they've been notified, they're having a problem, they file a complaint. If the owner of the property doesn't have a local contact, then they're going to have to deal with that and they're not going to like getting these phone calls at 3 o'clock in the morning from the sheriff's department. Yes. Or, so that would be them dealing with it. Exactly. And not so they'd Steve. be better off having a local, local contact. Well, there's no question in my mind that... that, that if we want, we can add something. Th if, this doesn't have enough punch to it if it doesn't have either the owner in town or a contact in town. There's very little that someone in Jersey can do if you get them when... when uh, but again, if the complainant is doing the calling, who are they calling? The phone number. They're, they're going to have to be notified. Yeah. All property owners will be given a name and phone number of the property man owner and property manager should problems arise. Right. So assuming there's no property manager, which I'm going to assume that, that is the uh, local, local contact, contact uh, the, the owner, by no fault of their own, lives in, in Saddle River, New Jersey, um, so it's at three o'clock in the morning that the neighbors are calling them. Good. What do they do then? I, I mean, then it's calling the sheriff. Is it then calling or the this, renters to, to? They've got the information. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm uh, I. That's definitely something we could do. Well, I, in in the realm of safety, which is one of the things yes. that you. You know, uh, making this a registration and getting information gathering, but safety, the, the first thing after a fire extinguisher to me would be someone at the other end of that phone that can come fix what truly must be an emergency if I'm calling you at all hours. Um, so maybe there's room for under inspections, permits, registration. Good neighbor. I'm trying to find a place either in one of these yeah. current you, sections yeah, or create a new section or something that would go on the registration form. Well, it just it seems we very much think. optional on this this when it says local contact, if any. Uh, so I might have four or five of these. I believe there's already owners in town that that own several short-term rental yes. properties. I would assume, if, if it were me, I would have a local person to address things immediately. Broken pipes, snow removal, things, something fell yes. through the window, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But well, that's, yeah. their, that's their option. We do, instead of local contact, if any, we but, local contact, if different from owner of property. Or property manager or, or with a local contact and number. And or. And a local contact and or manager. Because the manager can actually live 100 miles away. Yes, that's miles true away. too. Yeah, which we had the heat go out in December on our last one. Okay. We always do one for Christmas. The heat went out. So we got luckily the same guy. And just local out. contact? Local contact. Local person. Local Get person. rid of if any? If any, we're getting Get rid, rid of. Get rid of if any. Um, okay. I'm not sure how to deal with that. I guess. Safety is an issue, but most of what I think we'd be getting would be annoying call, annoyance calls. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, I'm very sympathetic to people who have problems with floodlights that are, you know, glaring them in the face. And other than, you know, taking the light bulb out, then they'd have to either, you never mind. Um, <laughs> we won't go there. No. Nope. <laughs> anyway. So um, I think local contact takes care of it, um, and we'll see if that needs to be tightened up or another section added to the law 
with some penalties for people who are not addressing their neighbors' concerns or complaints. Well, there's plenty we, of teeth in there uh, <coughs> regarding, by, by, by good wording, there's plenty of teeth in there for f fines and for multiple um, infractions. Um, I think... That, I goes want to back to, Steve, that goes back to zoning, though, right? Yeah, I don't want to you know, make, make no. Steve uh, the cop, but that's pretty much the job. Yeah, it is. And they would have to get a written, signed complaint right. that is specific, not just right. the, the, the written signed complaint door could is come from thing. Steve, though, too. Yes, that's true. Okay, so we're getting rid of number one on the registration form and making number one our fire extinguishers available, mm -hmm. followed by smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. I got a question on fire extinguishers. Uh, that's very... It's, fire extinguishers in a, a rental property I would think should be inspected yearly. They are in any commercial building. We have the fire extinguishers in, even in the town building are all inspected annually. Be. So um, maybe if we could just put add on to that when was the last inspection. That gets rid of the, I, you know, the committee sat down and said if we want to make this a safety issue most people who own short-term rentals are going above and beyond this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you may have had, you know, most people go way above and beyond this and inspect their fire extinguishers and their smoke alarms work and their batteries are changed and there's railings and there's all kinds of things. But the onus just went on them. And instead of us you know, saying to them, when was the last time? We could be asking them to draw a, you know, provide a floor plan. So many of these get so nitpicky. Well, I, as a life member of the fire department, and I've got a, a problem with the egress too, in case of a fire. Well, if, the, if you've ever trained the, the, in, a, in a smoky fire and you're in an unfamiliar building, it doesn't matter how. Some of these rentals are 3,000, 4,000 feet. And if you're trying to find your way from a bedroom in the middle of the night and the place is full of smoke, this is just something that, that I think of. That how are you going to do it? Understood, but how are we going to make this not become a huge... The it needs to be as huge as it needs to be. It doesn't have to be real huge, but can there I are certain things. Yes, you can. Are the fire extinguishers... Are, are, are there, are, are the fire extinguishers available slash and up to date? Are smoke detectors on each floor of the building and operable? You, you're trying to That's, keep it so that it's on the, the, this, the We're owner. trying to get the owner to right. think about safety mm -hmm. and, issues. And Don's trying to make sure that they feel That's the pinch that, there's, that, that they're being right. held to the Fine. standard so safety. Okay. Are the fire extinguishers available and up to date? And up to date. Yeah, are smoke detectors on each floor and operable? According to the New York State Code, there should be a fire, a smoke detector in each bedroom and one outside of each bedroom. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we adequate. change from on each floor to our... S adequate fire smoke detectors. And just for a point of purpose, too, anytime you get a new smoke detector after today. It's a sealed unit with a 10, a ten, ten year, year battery. Ten year battery. Right. Which is fine with me because, boy, yeah. they're a pain you have to change. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, are. Okay, so adequate and well, they tell you when it's out. smoke detectors yeah. you pull. on each floor or in the building. Don, are you happy with our adequate and operable smoke detectors on each floor of the building? Well, not on each floor, but where needed or where where required. Where required. By code. By code yeah. New York State Code. I have a copy of the code right here. If anybody wants to look at it. You know, your, your elimination okay. Okay. Excuse, of our excuse adequate, us. And, uh, adequate and operable smoke tech detectors um, where required in the building. Based on. As stated on New York Code. As per New York State Code. Okay. So that that makes the fire that's 
your fire, the fireman in you makes that makes you happier. Okay. And Good. Same thing with fire that. extinguishers. Okay. Yep. No question. What okay. about carbon monoxide detector? Is there one in the building? It's supposed to be one on each floor. On each floor. Starting That's in the basement. That's the on each floor. Yeah. Starting uh, in the basement. Got it. Are exit routes visible in case of emergency? I mean, that's going to be interesting. I don't yeah, have I, I don't have visible um, exit routes in my home. No, but you know your home. Uh, I understand that, but if I we mean, stayed in how one much of I it got lost in twice? I, I don't know how to. Um, are there enough? Uh, uh, are are there enough exit routes in case of emergency? Are there, ooh, because... What if there was an emergency, like when you go to a doctor's office or they have an emergency escape plan, if, if you, they just had to draw something and put it on the wall by the door? Is there an emergency escape plan? I, I mean... I don't know what to do with that. Are I exit routes like visible in case of emergency? I, I think we're getting a little carried away here, really. I know. Well, I are don't. exit routes visible? No, I, I don't. I don't mean with. I mean with what we're going with right now with emergency. Oh, so at some point, <laughs> okay, our exit routes. So just to clarify, in a smaller hotel of which I ran, yes, you did have to on each floor. Evacuation in fact, plan. At every, at at every crash bar type exit. Um, we had to have illuminated exit yeah. signs, but you yeah. don't have to have no, that no. in most of these places. But what would be very, very good would be to have those little sketches, little little plastic thing. You, I put them up there with with push pens, but at each one of those doors or any place that you felt would make it more visible in the case of emergency. And again. I realize why why these things are a little vague is because we're not trying to take this responsibility on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this is to remind those people who will be taking the public's money, but they should be concerning themselves with. I mean, you could just as easily take out our exit routes visible and put in, um, will you have a schematic for all exits? And that... In some cases, these places are three stories high. Okay. Um, so what about, are, for number five, are there adequate escape routes in case of emergency? And then number six becomes, is an escape plan posted? Mounted, yeah. They're not, is it something you can draw yourself with a ruler and a... And a sharpie. Yeah, that be anything. Special. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, the less busy it is, the better for folks. See, the thing who will look at those things if they're there. So I mean, there's just, nothing we can do about it. But uh, I've Somebody always been concerned about egress. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, uh, I'm, my kids stayed in one up in Old Forge that was an attic turned into a six-bedroom yeah. room. And there was only one Fixing little window four is in the narrow stairway. Four 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 which wouldn't have passed inspection if they had no. been adequate. Temporary. So number three is, is carbon rocks. monoxide. Number four, adequate es um, escape routes in case of an emergency. Five becomes, is an escape plan posted? Number six, is the septic system in alignment with occupancy? Okay. Number seven, if well water is available, has it been tested? Number eight, is there adequate parking? That one comes up, we had a huge discussion about that one because it's normally one car per bedroom. Um, is there adequate parking to um, prevent road being blocked? I worry about the snow plows in the winter. I worry about the neighbor's yard, you know. That could be posted in the rental agreement that no parking on the roads in the winter time. That's posted to avoid time. public roadways. So, is there adequate parking on your property on on the rental property to avoid parking in public roadways? Well, but Betsy's saying is if it's on your property, it's off. It's off road. Yes, on your property. I see. Is there adequate parking? You know, or your guests. How about premise. for your guests? On premise. Is there adequate parking for your guests? Mm -hmm. 
this is just for your guests. Is the address visible for emergency services? That was a recent add-on. That's a great one, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are railings present on all staircases? Again, a recent add-on. Mm -hmm. And again, I would put uh, decks. Staircases to, and decks. Okay. And according to New York State building codes. Well, if somebody says no, then Steve's got the reason to go do an inspection. Maybe well, they have to be a certain That's type. That's true. And, yeah. and there has to be a certain number of balusters uh, well, in between them. Well, instead yeah, of all of these New York State codes, why don't we code. just add a number 11, which is, are you aware of all New York State codes involving these issues? because then it's on them again to make sure that they've got a escape plan and railings and whatever. And once they get to see Steve, it may be too late for a complaint, but clearly that's the guide he's following. So that's not a bad idea to say, then it's you'll not be, quite you'll be as... held to, this, to the same. Yeah. And again, this is not just for uh, a or temporary you... residents. This would be if you built your house or put an addition on, you'd be held to that same. The other question, code. the other way to put it is, would you like a copy of New York State's building codes? Um, yes or no? Are you aware of and in compliance with all New York State codes? <laughs> if they are, I don't want to. They they, they may no. not know that, and well, then, and that it. that's no. why number okay. eleven would yeah. be. Would so you like a copy of? Go look it up and okay. say yes or no. I mean, okay, you know, okay. Let's, let's, let's stop, stop and let's get back to the board. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, Pete. I don't mean to cut you off. Okay. So, would you be would you be happy with that being added as far as New York State? Would you like a copy of New York State building? Or why not just, are you aware of all New York State building codes? Please be aware of, or whatever. I don't yeah. want to have to provide them. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Are you aware? I tried looking it up today. It's, Please be aware. It's ungainly. It's a couple hundred pages. But it's something that an owner could go online okay. and read. Read up. Right. Don't have to have it. All right. New York State, what's the title of this? New York State building code. Got it. Got it. So okay. then, after, before the signature, we would put the disclaimer that's on the page that the lawyer sent today yep. that she recommended for Section 14. I yep. would recommend that be used as the disclaimer above the signature of applicant. Okay. Mm -hmm. You say yes. This inspection does not, um, no. This registration does not constitute a warranty by the town that the premises are suitable for commercial purposes and property owners are responsible for adhering to the requirements of any third-party short-term rental provider. Um, and that's when we could add uh, New York State building and fire codes um, and that units are maintained in conditions required for said purpose. That's where that could go, and that would cover the New York State safety and fire codes. Yep. Okay. That would make okay, so then we don't that makes do, you comfortable, Don. Yeah. So then we don't have to do a number eleven because it's going to be actually up here in the in the disclaimer. In the disclaimer. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. okay. So Except that, for those, we knew that was the hard part. 14 or 15 line item. Um, I, I think this is really, really a very good municipal yes. law to attempt at giving people a chance <coughs> to rent their properties and others to rent them to stay. All right. Thank you for all your hard work. Indeed. Okay, really. Yeah, the committee did a great job. I will retype yeah, yeah, this yeah. and share it with everyone. <laughs> okay. Just, I want a copy like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the law as well, and then make it available to everybody via email tomorrow. Okay. And then you'll have the correct copy. So we're moving this. I'm I'm happy to move I, I, this piece Kathy. as amended. Kathy, are you are you ready for I'm, us to move this? I'm ready for it to okay. be moved. Yeah. Okay. So move. Okay. So Neil. I'll second. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Never left the perfect baby. Any any opposed? Any good. Okay. Okay, so we'll get it advertised and we will have to have a public hearing. Of course. Um on this, so we'll get that set up and we'll let you know at the next meeting what the date will be for that. Okay. Can I, can I just add one disclaimer Thank here? Thank you for all your hard work. That, that too, but I just want to say once again, uh, I hope that maybe the village will reconsider once Kathy has this typed up. Uh, I'm really saddened that we can't have a town-wide whole uh, piece that can be uh, both a safety feature for all people who come mm -hmm. to visit. No reason to wait. Okay. Okay, Kath. You're almost... You're almost done you know it's now almost what? over now yeah, yeah. okay so next state no campsite news. update um i've heard nothing new but i know neil has something he needs to add here well it's not a particularly uh, rousing um, endorsement but i have had a few co calls with the adirondack park agency i was um counseled after last meeting to go at this in a different way uh and to find the office of ms robin burgess who is really our own only um, sort of advocate for local governments and um, economic development in the park for the 102 uh, governments. Um, so I'm assured uh, as of today by her uh, assistant that this will be addressed and taken up to the proper authorities. That doesn't, you know, give me great hope any more than the different calls we've made to various elected officials, both <coughs> in the park and out. Uh, but we're trying to muster more um, sort of a global group of, of advocates and allies. Uh, so one more isn't a bad thing. No. Okay. Other than that, I've heard nothing from any of the fishing that, that we've done for the last Three months. I've heard nothing new either. So should we encourage okay. people to start another round of bothering the people in charge? Well, it does. It doesn't hurt. I, you know, I, I hate to see anybody either. quit. I just keep calling, keep making phone calls, and you know, whatever, whatever anybody can do, we Keeping need to continue. Mind. Today's um, May. We don't want to stop, right? We're getting up there. I don't know so. when would the when would the okay. sites open? No, they're open now, right? No, no, at the end of the month. Memorial? Memorial. Just before Memorial. Okay. Well. Okay. So moving along, BTI. <clears throat> so Vi sent me uh, this afternoon a report. They have been concentrating on the streams closest to the highest populated areas. Uh, they've completed 20 streams. Uh, the progress is slow due to the rainy weather, which we all knew, but the colder nights has slowed the development of the larvae and finding normal amounts of larvae in most streams with some occasional concentrations of very high numbers. Um, so they are working at it. They've been really cut back quite a bit. Okay, next is the zoning. And that, um, has everyone had a chance to read through all the paperwork that was given at the last meeting for you guys to take home and go through? So, okay, you have. So Neil is at the head of that committee. So I'm gonna turn that over to him. Once again, there's not a lot more for me to do. I'd like to hear from the rest of the board. Um, I think it was a good effort by Steve and by uh, Vicki uh, and her plank, or jungle. Plank. I did. I did have a question about, so by moving this X, retail business or service not otherwise specifically mentioned here, and is that... I know she's got something that, you know, road stands, that kind of, oh, no, that's a different one. That is different. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, does that include LLCs? I mean, where do LLCs fit in all of this? Uh, no, that's just a legal term. I mean, okay. anyone can have an LLC and run it out of their attic. We wouldn't even know it. It's okay. A, so any new, so by checking this red box here, uh -huh. I'm great. I'm great with everything. I just, that would mean that anyone who wanted to start a business that's not listed anywhere else would then have to go to the planning board and present a proposal. Correct. Then their neighbors get notified. Correct. 
And then um, the zoning board comes up with a recommendation. Does it? So I, I guess I'm thinking back through this whole thing that's coming up next, the next meeting. So does it have to be a seasonal application? Does it have to be? I, I guess this is all brand new to me, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, no, a, a retail business or service, not otherwise specifically mentioned herein, uh, is just allowing for sort of an ad hoc um, in your zoning. It still is going to be looked at much like, we don't use the same words, but my time in zoning and zoning schools were with the village, but it was a conditional approval. Yeah. So you're going through that same process, whether it be a uh, barbershop or uh, you know any any sort of small business, uh, an accountant's office, whatever it might be. If it's not mentioned, it's going to fall into here. So the classification of the property doesn't change, Correct. but they can apply the for use. a variance yes. for the use of the it. Use. That's exactly yes. what it is. It's Got for it. use. That's the use the right word. Got it. Um, no, then this that is answers not, that. This does not allow anyone to right. somehow slip, slip, you know, curveball in that now my property is commercial or my got property, it. Whatever. So all it does is is uh, like a change. Like if if you have a commercial piece of property and they want to put a different type of business in, they go for a change of use permit. Mm -hmm. But that permit is followed, and if a complaint is filed against that permit. And they're not following the guidelines, the original guidelines that the, that the board Stop work order, or yeah. then it could then, be, yes. then they can lose it. Got it. So it's nothing that's permanent. Got it. Okay, that that was the only question I had. The rest of it looks good. Okay, Don, did you have any concerns? No. Nope. Rochelle. No. Okay, so um, so we're moving right along with this. Then um, I'm going to say that we. We kind of really discussed it, and uh, the public hearing will be May 15th, and then after the public hearing that night, it will be at 7.15. When the public hearing closes, the board will um, approve it, and once we approve it, then um, Steph will file um, the application with the state on the local law, um, changing the local laws, um, and as soon as we hear from them, we're hoping it will be early enough so we have a couple of new businesses either changing the use or whatever of their business, um, expanding, um, they'll be able to have time to get it through for the summer when they plan to in, open. In many cases, <clears throat> these, these uh, new uses are just weren't thought of in the vast scheme of how many things can you tick off, but what can be in an RA and an RB and a, you know, medium use, et cetera. Um, so they kind of fall between the cracks and this gives the planning board the ability to do what planning boards should always do, have regular meetings, encourage people to come in to see them, and run things past them so that, oh no, that would never fly, or oh yeah, that, that would fit within this. Most public are not at all aware of the nuances of local municipal law and, and, and codes. <clears throat> but that requires, and, and Vicki runs that, a planning board that accepts folks in. Uh, next. Okay, put your thing on paper and get it to us, and the process then mills along. But it, it, you have to sort of find the cracks and fill them as zoning goes along. And, so this, and those I, red box, <coughs> those red X's allow them to fill those cracks. Yes, in. exactly. Okay, good. So, so I just want to remind folks that we have not done this since 2008, and we're supposed to be doing it like every four or five years. So this is way overdue, so that's uh, the review, so that's why we had to completely go through the whole thing. Um, so that's where we are that. Okay. About a week ago, Neil and I had a meeting um, down um, about the spec speculary primary care with Patrice McMahon uh, down at Nathan Latour Hospital. We discussed some of the concerns that we have, and quite a few have already been addressed. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, we had an excellent meeting. There was a lot of things they were not aware of down there, of procedures that were going on. So at this point, um, I'm just going to say a few things. Amanda has been out on maternity leave and will be back May 15th. So there will be two people at the counter once again. So if one is out drawing blood, the other one will be there at the desk to answer phones and assist patients as, as they 
approach the counter. The clinic is now taking on new patients, so anybody wants to go as a new patient just has to call and um, make an appointment with them. Um, and they will be taking all patients, even if they haven't been seen in a couple of years. There was a little bit of a confusion there. If you haven't had a physical in one or two years, we can't see you. That was just a misconception that straightened out. So if you have not had a physical, it doesn't matter. If you're sick, you call, you make an appointment. Um, Is that a question on that? Are they taking on new patients? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're a... Say you're renting one of these short-term rentals mm -hmm. and your child has an earache. They can go there now? Supposedly you can make it, you can call up make and, an and make an appointment. So. They're not in acute care. They're not a walk-in service. They're still a doctor's office. Uh, but yes, you could call and make an appointment. Okay, so Pat Patrice try. did assure us that they are still looking for a doctor like every other hospital is. That's just something that's difficult. But the days that Carla is out, there will be a replacement there for that day. So we will have full coverage five days a week again. So Fridays, we weren't, we weren't having coverage, so no one could see a doc or could see a PA. We will have someone there. The clinic hours are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 4. On Thursdays, they open up at 6.30 and they're open till four in the afternoon and they open so early because it's, it's the day they draw blood and do allergy shots, but you can still call if the schedule allows and make an appointment. Um, Carla does leave earlier uh, that day, but the front desk stays until four o'clock. Um, these are all things that we got confirmed. Um, so there was a, it was a very productive meeting. We will be meeting again to update the contract and work on a few other items that need to be addressed. One thing that Patrice brought up to us is she would like to see them starting to open on Saturday mornings in July and August like they used to. Um, so I just want to, in, in closing, I just want to say that if you know anybody that has had a problem in the past, getting, whether it's getting appointments, encourage them to call and go back to the clinic if they have a problem, let us know so we can address it right away. Um, we really, we're partners and we, we need to make this work. We need to get things back to the way it used to be. Um, did I cover it all? Pretty much, I'm just gonna add two things. One is uh, a lot of the things that eventually became problems were all started by a hangover from COVID. Uh, followed by then less working people. But there was some real bad information being given out. Um, and I don't know the genesis, I uh, didn't even want to delve into it too much, but suffice to say, the vice president in charge of primary care, <laughs> Littau, was surprised by some of the information that was being given out. And um, that's why there was some immediate uh, response. The other is, uh, everyone who, uh, who has called the town at any one point to lodge complaints or question uh, things that seemed odd um, over the last year, Betsy had every one of those things in her hands at this meeting. She, she was terrific. Um, you know, I'm the intro person. She never met Patrice before. I've dealt with her for years. But every single one of those items was worth bringing up and boy, immediately, um, you could see the, the wheels turning. Yes, as to how embarrassment, gonna, apologies. Uh, how they were going to solve those things. And I also want to say the next day after that meeting, I didn't tell you this, but I did call these individual people to tell them the issues were addressed. I did know that. To please start calling the clinic and going there again. If you have any issues, please call me back so we can be following through on this because we need to get this back to the way it was. Bravo. So please get the word out there to everyone. Wow. It was, it was an excellent meeting. Yes. Amazing follow-through, too, Betsy. Yeah. Yeah. The only way it could have been better is if they, they said, oh, Mike's coming back. You know? uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but if she wishes. More but, to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The it's young not... lady they have there now. That... Savannah. Savannah, she's yeah. excellent. She really is. She's very good. And actually, the day that we were going down to Nathan Tower, I actually went there and had a meeting very early in the morning with Savannah and Carla to explain to them what we were hoping to accomplish wanting to know what they felt were problems that we could help get resolved for them so that they could kind of open the doors better to our community.
community. Um, one thing we did mention was a lot of our seniors have been forced to go out of the community, um, which, like Patrice said, absolutely not. That should not be happening. They should be able to go right to the clinic here. So there's more to come. We'll keep everybody updated on that. Um, our, o, our new RO system is here, and we did get it for the right price. Um, so at the next meeting on Randy's um, credit card bill statement, you will see it will be on there. And I do have a call into Bill. We have not connected in a week and a half because he's got to start reinstalling other systems. And um, with the potential of the new building uh, opening in Waller's barn, the new business, um, we will have to have that tested to see if that was part of the uh, litigation back then. So it is possible we will have to put an RO system in there and maybe we're gonna get lucky. The house in front does not have one and does not need one, so we may get lucky. That's good. So, okay, new business. Library board, I'm gonna turn that over to Karen. And I'm gonna talk, <laughs> you're gonna make me smile. Um, <laughs> Karen, Karen. Smile to the camera, Karen. <laughs> I wish I don't wish COVID back, but no, no. you know, it's one good thing about wearing those masks. If, oh, I, yes. could, if I could talk to my tooth, alright. It's not easy. No. But anyway, just to inform you all that Sherry Matthews has submitted her resignation. Mm. Retirement. A retire retirement. Not resignation, retirement. It is a retirement, okay. Um yeah. there she's retiring. And especially, I believe she's probably somewhere around there. I have been away, so I did not get any official paperwork from her. Uh -huh. But at least that's it. Did she submit something to you? Yeah, she just, did, I, and the I first one said back, resignation. Yeah, and I just got back yesterday, so I have her change it. Either way, we need a library. Please accept this as formal notice of my retirement. Okay, effective Friday, June 30th. All right, effective Friday, June 30th. Uh, I want to thank Donna Bankovich for sort of handling this when I was away and putting together an ad for the newspaper, which will run this Wednesday and for two consecutive weeks after that, looking for a, I was going to say pharmacy, looking for a library manager. And just to clarify, library manager is a civil service designation. We, because of the population base here with this library, do not need to have a library director, which requires a master of library science degree. And a lot more money. So, and we also could not afford an MLS. Um, so, if you're confused by seeing that ad for a pharmacy, I did it again. A library, a library manager. It's because. It's a civil service job. Okay. We, call them, we call them a director. Yeah, I'm sure and you're going to put. We like it. calling them, you know. Yes, of course, a director. librarian. So it's, it's sort of like an in-house title. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify that, so that will run. We'll see what uh, what's out there, what we get. Um, of course, we're sorry to see her leave. Sure. I think she was planning it, but not. It came upon quickly yeah. where she was able to find a place in Florida, and it worked out well for her. So I certainly do wish her well. But I just wanted everybody to know. That we're looking, and uh, we'll see what's out there. Okay. And okay, excuse me. What are the? I know you're gonna put it in your head, but what are the qualifications? What what needs to be for a library manager? For there is a whole civil service, um, and it's all written up. If you're looking, yeah, it's a big and, list. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't bring that with me at all. Okay. Uh, it's a high school diploma, ability to communicate verbally and in writing. You know, with the public. Past library experience is not necessary, but certainly would sure. be welcome. And your board um, would, would screen these and, and uh, mm -hmm. interview those interview, people. Yep. Oh, yep. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and we'll have a regular interview process. Um, it's a full-time position, full-time benefits with the town. We still have another full-time position, which is Roxanne, and we have a part-time, which right. is Tanisha at this point. Um, see how that plays out. And, what we get to. Um, so we're, we're sad to see her go, but um, I understand where she's coming from. But that's it for the library. Okay. Know, so okay. Aware of that. Okay, so next um, we have um, a planning board resignation. I have received a resignation from Carol Waller. Carol has become a resident of San Antonio, Texas, and she will be spending more time in Texas than New York. 
Um, and she just wanted to let the board know uh, we will not be looking right now. Um, I did talk to Vicki, but we're going to wait, and uh, down the road they're going to um, make a recommendation to the board for appointment. She was, um, she was a good She was board excellent. Board. But like she said, that, that, that my life seems to be evolving where I am happiest around the little people here in Texas who call me Gran Grammy. I can understand. So, of course, absolutely. So, absolutely. So, good for Carol. Mm -hmm. um, next is the community gardens. Um, I did hear from June, and she has reached out to all the folks that had a plot in the community garden last year to see if they were coming back. At this time, she has a few openings. If anyone would like one or knows anyone, uh, please uh, tell them to contact me, and I'll give them June's information to contact them. We're also looking to replace the fence um, around the garden. So June is getting the information on what kind and a dollar amount. Um, so we'll be looking possibly maybe like one Saturday or something or one day during the week, maybe we could get a bunch of us together and we could volunteer to go over there and help get this fence up. Sure. Um, if we have enough people, we could get that done. Yeah. Um, the other thing, there is a, there is a problem with, um, we just discussed this before the meeting, there is a problem with the greenhouse with the snow, it did damage, and it did a lot more damage than we had thought from looking at the picture. Randy went and looked. Do you want to just quick explain the damage, Randy? Sure. Um, are those the pictures there? Yeah. If the board wants to look at, I think it's either the first All right, or start second one, we'll pass them around. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to use for layman's terms, because I don't know greenhouse terminology, all the boughs that go over <coughs> plastic pipes mm -hmm. are broken. Um, every single one of them. Ugh. So the back farthest one was duct taped at one point in time, and then some more wooden supports were put in there to assist this, I guess. Those have fallen down and broke off, which tore the plastic housing. So now there's holes in the plastic housing so, in order to replace the bows, you would have to roll the plastic back sure. completely off of it and be in it's every one of them. Why in the world would you put back on plastic that's got holes and rips in it? Yeah. So, it needs a new roof. It needs a new roof. It needs new bows. It needs new framework. So, this is not by any means a go and wrap it with some duct tape and go back at it because if you look at the pictures, the plastic is literally broken in splinters. So I don't know where you want to go with this. Um, the village guys at one point in time in Farrell was there, used to do all the maintenance of it. Um, now it seems to be they're cleaning on the town to do it. But they didn't tell you that. No. June indicate to you that we really need two greenhouses, and we have a garden there every year, so I'm there a lot. And I don't think you should really want to talk to June about that. I don't think both of those greenhouses are used extensively enough to warrant having two greenhouses. Okay, that's a good. Point. Some people like to grow their tomatoes in that, and then they say, "Well, it's for the food pantry. What we grow in the greenhouse." So some people do do that. That's what Margaret used to do. Margaret used to grow her tomatoes there. And they all went to the food pantry. Uh, I don't know if everybody does that anymore, but the one of the greenhouses I went in last year was really in disarray, and it yeah, really wasn't well cared for at all. Okay. Yeah, and so I'm not even sure. I don't know which one has the answer. If she said the front, the front one. one. The, the, the front one. greenhouse had some damage. So maybe we just need the back one. I mean, maybe you don't even need the front one. You can just take that, take it down or something. I mean, I would check. With her, yeah, or see I'll talk to her if that's a possibility. If you really need that, mm -hmm. I'll okay. Anyone, yeah. I think if we're yeah. trying to get the right terminology, Randy, I remember going back to Nancy Welch. Uh, the only time I was involved was a high tunnel. Yes, yeah. 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 These are, it's a high tunnel. High tunnel. Yeah. And, uh, maybe one high tunnel is enough. Yeah. Can yeah. one be repaired enough to use it temporarily? Repaired to use it during the summer. And then in the fall, when it's not so busy, for repair. But it would take a long, it would be a process to repair what's there. I mean, both, either one of them. 
Like no, no, the one, the one is fine, Dan. Okay. So we're just talking the front one, the old one. Right. So that's the only one that I was in because that's where all these pictures came from. Right. Where the snow collapsed to one whole side. So if you you talk to June and they agree on only one, the back one would be the, the back one, one would be the one. That's the newest one. Yeah. So it's taller. It's more. Yeah. Thanks, guys. More you have to tell. This was a slow arch, and obviously the snow piled up. So we can check with right. So I'll I'll talk to June. I'll give her a call tomorrow. She's waiting to hear from me, and we'll discuss it. Is is that something that the cover should come off every winter, or oh, is gosh. that going to be? I don't know. It's plastic. How do you, I know? But when we, we got go twenty inches of snow, we discussed last year oh. with a bigger greenhouse or high tunnel. Yes, <laughs> snow needs to be either removed from the sides of it, mm -hmm. or it needs to be dismantled. And dismantling it now annually. Is, yeah, it's annually. It's a lot of work. Yeah, annually. And then and putting it back together again in the spring. Right. And then put it all back together in the spring, put all where your dirt is and all that. I mean, yeah. that's a major pain. pain. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. not a workable. No, I know. We, that's one of the reasons why we... And, and we don't I, have the I, users. We don't... I mean, she's right. looking for people now for outside Yeah, spots. she has like four and spots people want coming back. That's what I mean. Back. We don't have the users to work that kind of work. Okay. No, I'm just looking. I mean, can we walk in there and just go boom, boom, boom with a broom in the winter if we get a ton of snow? Oh, yeah. How could you get in there? I don't know. That's why. I'm to yeah, open. So that, it's just yeah. the snow that's right. Uh, the plastic comes right to the ground. Yes, right. it does. And it just piles up and becomes pushes. an igloo. You have to snow blow the sides. Yeah, it's right. an igloo. Yeah. What did they okay. do with the big one in Wells? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> some point, and we discussed this with Blake earlier, yes. is highway guys go alongside of it and plow the snow away on one side. Mm -hmm. okay. The other side sometimes gets shoveled. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. And would, says, would Clay do that for us? No, no. Okay. 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 Okay, guys, let's yeah. move on. Um, next, we have Gary Reinhardt. Gary wants to speak to us about Daklin Radio. Gary, Gary. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Oh, bad. It's got a trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> Wish it was. Um, so I had a quick discussion with Betsy in her office, and we felt it would be appropriate for me to come before the board to make this announcement. Um, as of September 1st, which is the end of the contract with the town, having to do with recording meetings, I will be shutting Daklin Radio down. Um, unfortunately, it has grown too expensive. It's taken too much of my time between college and doing firefighting and just all the other things. It's only so much time in a day. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So unfortunately, it's just becoming too much to do. Um, I had discussed with her various options we could go with um, as either we can change the, the contract to be just YouTube. Um, I, look, I quick looked up the numbers. Uh, in the past 30 days we've had 46 viewers on board meetings. In the past year we've had 542 people when I mean so they are fairly popular. On um, YouTube. On YouTube, yes. Um, unfortunately I have not been able to secure the rights to a license for music, so radio station's pretty much just been copyright free music and the board board meetings. So it, nobody's really listening at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I can't afford five hundred dollar license. It's, just, it's too much for me. So, um, I will, so like I talked about today, I will fulfill my end of the contract, which ends on September 1st. Um, and then we can either discuss it from there, rather if you would like to continue on. Um, there is a chance that I may be moving in September to go to college. college. Um, that hasn't been decided yet. But that, that's just an option that's out there. But we have till September. As I so. say, can I suggest that we then wait till the time gets closer and you have a better idea what you're doing so you don't yeah. stress yourself right. yeah. committing to anything? Yeah. yeah. And then so. we'll look to you for advice regarding YouTube or you know, where we can do this ourselves. Yeah. 
Great, Gary. Okay. Thank you, Gary. No problem. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I'll be around. No okay. Bends, you can't get me that easily. Okay. <laughs> committee reports. Don, anything? No committee reports. Uh, Neil, anything? I think I've touched all mine. Michelle? Um, just a couple of small things. Um, Stephanie and I spoke today. There were a couple of small issues on the website that we did um, address. <coughs> if somebody was looking for information. I think our website is a little bit difficult to navigate at times and mm -hmm. find things. So um, we realized, which I did not realize, that the adopted 2023 budget was not up. The preliminary one was, so we got that fixed. Um, and Stephanie and I discussed possibly finding somewhere on the home page to link that, um, yeah. just to make it a little bit easier to find. Mm -hmm. And then um, Youth Rec, Kathy and I have a meeting on Thursday, right, uh, with Samantha and with Sheila Krauss from Arietta to try to make a plan for the summer. Great. Super. Coming faster than we think. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of the town website, it still is Kathy aired as that was one that of was the things that was fixed. Things. Yep. Chris Meixner sent a whole list of stuff. Oh, okay. Chris used to Chris was the one that did mm -hmm. it before yeah. Michelle. When Chris retired, then Michelle took that over. There's a there's a lot to the website and a lot of different mm -hmm. little pages and if I haven't been in there and I haven't seen it, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't come to me to yeah. change it, but I uh, anything you see like that, send it to me, I will change it immediately. Okay. We just noticed it the other day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, that's it for committee reports. Okay, next I'm looking for a motion to pay the bills. Um, the, the the abstract is dated April 27th, with the exception of voucher number 2743, which I had put a sticky note on it, McClary Media was not correct, so that will be adjusted and be in the next bill pay. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Public comment. I have something to say. Oh, Taryn? No. First, I have a question. When is the town pickup day? I know you mentioned it last time. Third Wednesday of June. It is June. Oh, I was thinking that there was one in June, May. June, August, October. June, August, and October. Thank you. Secondly, you had said when you were talking to Patrice, <coughs> there's no reason why seniors should necessarily have to leave town. However, I have United Healthcare, which is a big, major health care carrier. And it used to be, uh, I've been here for 20 some years now, that I could go over here, get my blood drawn, and they would bill United Medicare with this supplement of United. No problem. Probably in the last two years now, um, I would go over here, make, make them go early in the morning, get a blood draw. They said they couldn't bill United Healthcare anymore. They no. would have to go to the hospital yes. and get your blood drawn. Can I handle so that? So really, handle that? I said, it's the same facility, mm -hmm. you can't. No. Because the blood, I said, yeah. fine, I go to Indian Lake. It works out great. Go to Indian Lake, mm -hmm. Glens Falls Hospital, absolutely no problem. I, as a senior, have to leave town. Mm -hmm. Why? Go ahead. <clears throat> um, this, is, uh, yeah, this is not passing the buck. I followed this all the way up the chain to the CEO of Litar. This is not Litar not wanting the business. This is your insurer having a difficulty, and it didn't always work this way, but my regular golf partner and I have to drive down to Clubsville to get his blood, same carrier. Uh, so he bugged me enough, and then two or three other people bugged me enough, and I took it everywhere. I said, look, it's clear. We only, they can draw it anywhere, and the other 10 primary cares, it's still done in this hospital, and yet, for some reason, one of the biggest carriers in the country cannot understand this. If you go to Hudson Headwaters, they they have you know clear path through the computer, um, but it's it is not anything that Litar, they have chased it. They have sent uh, messages to United expressing this. Um, you would be a f he's not Dick. You would be a perfect person to latch on to United Healthcare to explain this. And if for any chance. You, you, you need uh, verification from Lid Tower. We'll get it to you in writing. So is it all primary, so all clinics within their system 
Well, as far as I know, to cover that I, I, as far as I know, that's okay, correct. It's all so all of not just the seniors right. that have the United Healthcare and Speculator right. or the surroundings, but those in Kroger Lake and Broad Alvin and Perth. Okay. If if that's your carrier, mm -hmm. they seem to have a problem saying, well, no, you've got to go to to you know an approved lab. Well, these things are picked up, sealed, brought down. They're taken care right. of at Litar. Right. Um, I, I I can't explain. Their, their, their philosophy. But if you get someone who's more than just a receptionist at United, at United, at United. they're going to they're going to trace back okay. that this is them. And again, the the problem is mm -hmm. these are with people. I assume you as well, who have been doing blood draws here mm -hmm. and sent in and have it paid for oh, no for some years. This is right. over eighteen months where mm -hmm. we're in this. Uh, it's a hamster wheel. But it's, right, it's strictly united. There's no reason why Litauer would, would want to inconvenience their primary care. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll follow. I'd love to follow up things like that. I know that. you so do. I, I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I, would, I, would I would want to call the last person I talked to about this and said, right. well, you'll be expecting a call. Right. You'll be getting a call. <laughs> from the I U.S. Check that out. Anything else, Karen? No, that's it. No, Thank okay. You. I'll set for tomorrow. I'll try to make it. I'm Wednesday. Okay. I will try to be there. Wednesday. Okay. Um, anybody else? Pete, did you have anything for public? Okay, good. Okay, welcome. Okay, glad to see you. Okay, so next we'll go into round table. Start with Don. Uh, just on the insurance thing, uh, I've been going through a lot of tests lately, and I, Humana is wonderful for there us retirees. Great. There has been no questions, no balking, no nothing. Awesome. Good. Awesome. That's good to hear. Anything else? Nope. Yep. Well, I'm not going to steal your thunder for that. For that. Okay. But uh, I'll be there Wednesday as well. Okay. Okay. Rochelle? Nothing tonight. Okay. Kathy? No? Steffi, did you have anything? Um, yes. Stamps. I can. Stamps. <laughs> so, stamps. Um, unless there's any objection from the board, we are running very low on stamps. I think I have one roll now on hold Ooh. after taxes. Lots of core really? stuff going out. Yes. Um, if it's okay with you guys, I will from now forward for the rest of the year buy two rolls at a time as we need them. Like we're on the last roll, we're getting close. Just buy two at a time. Yeah, it's not going to cost any more money. Sure. So I don't, I don't yeah. know the answer to this. There, there's no more. Like nonsense, they tried it for a while. The forever, they, they've given up on that, right? The forever stamp. Well, we bought them. I know. We, in the past, we used to. She, she bought as much as she was could it, before. But then they the, keep going up. But she bought right. as much as she could before the prices went, went up, up to save right. money. Right. They're still, she did the right thing. They're still forever stamps. Is there any money right. Value just keeps right. right. You have to buy them, and then there is. They're, they're still, still worth money that money if the price goes up again. Because we didn't use up all the budget. We did for the tax line. That's gone, but the town hall postage line. There's the forever stands yeah. close. Okay. Anything else? But we've had a lot in postage. We've been the ban. That was quite Whatever a bit of money you, with all that paperwork. You have to do have what to keeps your office yep. going. Overnighted. Yeah. Uh, anything something. else? The mail. Um, oh, I did go to the Nistica Clerk Conference um, for a few days. Um, it was a surprise. Um, I did get a scholarship from the Tri County Clerks Association. Um, I believe I was the only clerk there in our county. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong there, but I didn't run into any from our county, and they did issue me the, the we did have 100% membership of the clerks in our county, though, that are, have joined the, the um, Nestica. So it was great. It was very informative. We had, um, we had AOT there and a lot of great instructors. I took a course on, on bonds, um, learned a little bit more with that after the fact. Um, but there won't yes. be another one. Right. Sure. Um, so, okay. anything else? Okay. Sounds good. Those okay. things are worthwhile. Else? They just are. Okay, so like I said before, at the next meeting, May 15th, there will be a public hearing, which will start at 715 on the local zoning. Um, Community Pride Day is Wednesday, May 3rd. We are meeting at the second parking lot going out of the village at 10 a.m. Um, when uh, when we're done, the um, senior senior center will be having a lasagna lunch for us. But I have to get a head count, so if you guys could tell me, I know Don, you're not going to make it. I don't know. Okay, you may surprise us, but Neil, you're going to make it, right? Okay, I will be there. 
Okay, um, Eileen? No, I'm going to go home and pee. Yeah. Okay, but I'm going to be there Wednesday. Okay. Um, Karen, you'll be there. Will you also go for lunch? Um, sure. Uh -huh. Okay, um, and I think that's all we had. I think that's it. Um, that was that. I just want to let everybody know that Kathy and I had both reported at the last meeting that um, we had contacted our attorney six to eight weeks prior for information on the 10% EMS discount and also the short-term rental stuff. And she had just gotten back to us the day of our meeting at like 4 or 4.30 last time. Well, the EMS stuff, we had already decided not to do the meeting before. So I did contact her the next morning and told her I... Um, had a problem and didn't feel that we should be paying for it because we waited so long. I reached out to other townships uh, to see what they were doing and the board since has decided not to go with that. So she went and had the bill pulled. So we will not be charged for the short-term rental information that no, she did the send. EMS stuff. I mean the EMS, EMS stuff, not short-term rental. Thank you, Kathy. But she's doubling the uh, short-term rental. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to remind everybody of is the chamber dinner. Um, which is May 18th. Today was the cutoff date, but they weren't open, and I'm sure if anybody went tomorrow or Wednesday, they would accept your money and your reservation. Um, and it's 5.30 to 7.30 at the Lemon Tree Brewery. All is welcome. And that's all I have. Our next meeting is May 15th at 7 p.m. here at the library, and I'm looking for a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay. Is there more? Okay. Yeah. In your name, right now. <laughs> <laughs>